Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast. This is a show where a couple, a couple of visual storytellers get together, take a walk around various topics that tend to cross one's path on this endeavor of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Uh, hi, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I make some interactive things. I do a lot related to user experience design and coaching. And also today with us as our special guest, Jen Vaughn. Jen Vaughn, who? Yeah. Oh. Do you do, do, do you do you have a a succinct title? So see, the 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 running joke on the show is that I have a very succinct title. I'm a cartoonist, a teaching artist, and Rob is always he's got like this ball of play-doh in front of him called his job description that he's constantly shaping and running through the fun factory turning into a snake <laughs> turning into stars um so do you have a, a, a succinct one or is yours uh, malleable yes i can uh, i am a freelance cartoonist um and narrative designer for the video game company slash art uh horde slash space cult very very spaceship as well as a dungeon master uh and tabletop role-playing designer so this sort of succinct and like looking around shiftily. I don't know why. So, and my pronouns are she, her. So, oh. Ah, thank you. Um, and Jen, Jen is one of these. So I met you for the first time at CXC last year and it was one of those wonderful moments. I get them every once in a while where I meet somebody and they, they kind of whip around me and I go, I don't know what that was, but I got to be around that like as much as I can, because there's something like not, not to talk about like, like, psychic energy or anything but maybe it is maybe it's something like that but it was just something about like there's something about that person that i need to like i need to just expose myself to it as much expose myself i need to be around as much as possible so so that i can you know learn from that level up my own uh presence in a room because you are a very interesting and dynamic person i watched you work with kids at cxc and you were amazing Thank you, Jersey, so, and I need you to leave me a comment or referral on my LinkedIn profile after this. Um, uh, just, you just, actually, you got it if you need it. I, I would be more than happy to do that. So, but because yeah, uh, so the topic we explored last week was um, virtual events. Rob and I sort of did like a cursory look at it. And then like, I immediately thought like, oh, I have to talk with Jen about this because you've been doing a lot of really cool stuff. In addition to being a narrative designer and cartoonist, um, you do this regular ongoing show called The Big Dun Jen Show, which yeah. I should pull up on the screen while we talk about it. Um, yeah, so The Big Dun Jen Show, it's a, uh, to also put it succinctly, uh, it's a weekly uh, Twitch streaming RPG show where um, every month we play a new game and have a new set of uh, players. So uh, it was a panel show for about the <laughs> first five, uh, six months um, where people will come into this studio right here at Very Very Spaceship. And, um, but now we have uh, moved to the internet, which is great because, um, I mean, you know, coping, but also because we can bring in people from everywhere. Um, so in the past uh, I had, I mean, and I, we like to feature also people um, in the role-playing community, uh, the arts community, comics, uh, video game design, and you know, um, you know, not just show off white men and how awesome they are, like show off, you know, the diversity that is the community. And it's been fantastic. Like having, we played a game where like everyone was a, a god that was thrown down to earth and had had been a band called uh, Hearts and Lightning by Flowers, um, who's a Malaysian game designer. We played uh, Our Haunt where everyone's a ghost by uh, Jimmy. Um, so like there's a lot of, we also, we of course, played some Dungeons and Dragons just because it's so... Um, What's the word when something's everywhere? Omniscient? Omnipresent? No, one of those O words, right? <laughs> Ubiquitous? Ubiquitous. The mm. U word. Thank you. Wait, is it a U, Jersey? No. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I think so. so it's a yeah, it's a it's a fun show. Um, and I'm very lucky that I get a lot of people to uh come along with me for the journey. And uh, you know, we'll play in my my little worlds and occasionally we have guests, uh game masters as well. It, it's it has like really awesome production values too you've done a really cool job of like it's it's like when you looked at the i had the pictures that you sent me uh rotating the gallery on the screen so you could see like what the setup looked like where it's essentially just like a what is like a, a coffee not a coffee table like an office table that pe three people sit in a row and you're sitting on the end of the table talking to them but then you like you cut all the video so that it looks like they're sitting at um like sort of like a jeopardy panel and then you're on a screen to the left as the host simultaneously oh. and with all the cool art what 
Well, that's, that is all thanks to my producer, Good News, who uh, yeah. is was master and commander of this studio space, um, who has some of his own shows. But he, um, like, yeah, we we try to iterate or like, up, like not innovate, but like, you know, like um, up our production values, like, you know, uh, uh, slowly, but like on a weekly basis. So, um, you know, we've switched we switched from like me making physical puzzles to now like working on digital ones that I can send people ahead of time if they need to print out or something that we can like uh, cycle through. Um, and then like, we also have a really good video editor too, who like for when the episodes go live on YouTube, um, uh, Snoot as he's called, <laughs> uh, he uh, makes them look really good. So it's literally nothing to do. I drew the overlay. That's about it. Like, you know, <laughs> okay. that was it. It's all, it's all them. So, <laughs> well, that, that's good to know. And that's something I'm hoping we can dig into when we talk about like what it takes to put on virtual events, because there's another one that we can talk about um, when we dive into the topic proper called it, which is actually going to stream live tomorrow uh, at the time of this recording, uh, May 1st, which is the very, very shopping network. But I think we're like full on in topic, right, Rob? Do you want to hit, want to hit the music? Uh, yeah, let's go there. Why not? This, um, <laughs> I right. yeah that's uh I I had a um I checked oh, no oh. go ahead <laughs> I said yes here we are music's happening now we're in it okay I have a habit of like layer layering one extra layer too many on any topic so I was <laughs> well like, layer away maybe this is the time I actually don't <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah I mean I I know I think we're 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 there I mean puzzling out virtual events um what uh. uh I guess what have you been doing is think about like the, the interesting example you had all for the big dungeon show and I, I, how do you pronounce that it's <laughs> it's I, dungeon it's just i just spelled dungeon? it um and again okay. that was my producer came up with that and i because i was like that's too close to like people are gonna just add a b in there and call me like dumb gen sort of. <laughs> uh, i was like my oh, no. fragile <laughs> ego cannot handle this but uh no it's uh, <laughs> People get it like halfway through usually, like when they watch the like in chat, they'll be like, oh my God, this stupid title of your stupid show. And I'm like, yes, the, thank you. The, the, that I, would be I like such silly. a, yeah. I didn't get it until I heard you say it out loud and I went, oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was sort of a play off someone else that had a drawing and memory show where they would like have a panel of artists and they'd be like, okay, today we're drawing a 90s uh, mascots from fast food commercials or whatever, you know, like, or, you know. And like then at the very end they would show like the actual side by side of what it looked like, but that show was called Galen Drew's Galen Draws, hosted by Galen Drew. So I think they were like, let's just make yeah. all the titles overly complicated that include the hosts, so people think they're egomaniacs. They're, you know, <laughs> confirming it. So. It's it's fun. It's it's a fun title, it, and you know it's got it has a lot of you in it. So why you know makes it <laughs> makes it more yours and stuff. But like uh, the the um, but going from like that that initial studio setup that must have taken some iteration and planning to all of a sudden, like, how are you dealing with that? We're just going to the online now, like the uh, remote. You've been, so, yeah. Um, well, poorly the first time my internet uh, at home was not good. So I actually had to turn my video off and like slid the, uh, um, we were playing D and D and I'm trying to remember uh, it was a, Oh no, not a shambler. Anyway. Um, um, a gibbering mouth there. So it's just this like fleshy mound of like many mouths and gnashing needle teeth. Um, mm -hmm. um, speaking of Plato. And uh, so I was just like, slide that in as my picture since that's what I'm playing. And uh, um, but so then I, I started coming here for a better internet uh, for the moment while my booster was being shipped to me. Um, but it's, I think everyone in the last month and a half has, they've leveled up their like conferencing call game. Like remember, when we were watching, uh, what was it, uh, Back to the Future? And everyone's like, oh man, video calls, I can't wait. And then like FaceTime came out, and everyone's like, no, don't ever call, like, <laughs> do not do that. Yeah, now, now everyone's just like, yeah, yeah, I got this. I can easily do it. So um, it's been pretty like, and like, I'm, you know, we're all, the three of us are like, you know, using mics, but like mm. most people can, you know, use just like, you know, a headset of some kind too. Um, so it's not, it hasn't been really, really bad, honestly. Um, it's been a uh, pretty easy, I think, um, because a lot of uh, RPG shows are also done, um, uh, sort of like a call as a call-in show. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of like okay, back to that. It might be like energy-wise a little bit rougher, as I'm used to um, compelling people with my eyes and my um, like wafting like pheromones or something. So it's a little. I'm like okay, I have to do more <laughs> voices now, or so, you know. 
we we did stipulate at the top that you have a presence about you. Yes, that, that. <laughs> it's just a fog of fairness. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, watching you facilitate the the session, like I, the one the I saw I saw the whole episode of um, oh what was it uh, some kids in Colorado. Yeah, um, Tales from the Loop, which is Tales from the Loop now a TV show. So, oh my gosh. I mean, not not actually. based on us, based on the art, like the <laughs> by Simon Stolenhag, yeah. And uh, and yeah, I mean, you're you're doing a lot of performance of of like switching voices and you know all the facilitation stuff of of being sort of the 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 um the facilitator um like a dungeon master, game master, what have you. What's it called for that game? Uh, oh. That one is actually, I think it's just game master, but we called it loop master as a joke because we were just trying to. Yeah, you know, sure. And say, oh, I say we. Uh, good news again, my producer. So he, it's basically I'll come to him with a list of things, and he'll just cross off the bottom half, and then be like, "I can do these," and I'm like, "Yes, thank you." Right, um, so, but the uh, it, it it, but it's a lot of it just depends on the the group too. Like everyone's bringing something different to the table. I probably honestly spend as much time writing like one adventure as I do like looking through the people that I want to have on the show and like thinking about their personalities and who they might be playing sort of. So like there's usually a person that's gonna play it pretty straight. There's usually a wild card. There's usually someone that's always gonna be um, impulsive. So trying to balance that party dynamic out. But even in, um, if I don't do it, you know, great or, you know, like they, they all shift around. Like they see the holes that need to be kind of filled. Um, and it's it's been great every time, like I'm, it's, I'm very, again, very lucky to have people come on the show that are um, just wonderful. Like, so, sorry, I oh, yeah. like babble on about them forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it makes a lot of sense because I mean, you're, you're, um, I mean, you're creating this, I imagine for, it's a fun creation, but you're also creating it for an audience too. And so you're uh, very intentionally thinking through like it, what I'm hearing is recruiting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and figure out who to invite and uh, imagine that there's it's not just the logistics for that I mean you're, you're thinking of like personas and, stuff and yeah it's definitely and, not logistics though I would have had the show start earlier because now that we are inviting people from everywhere the show ends on the east coast at midnight and I'm like I am so sorry like because <laughs> those people are just like well well time to go to bed you know like I'm like oh, <laughs> like <laughs> um I will say we do do something that um I, other shows do as well probably but like uh and maybe your games do as well but like we do cool down sessions sort of where we kind of like talk about it after the show um that's when I ask for feedback I usually say like can you compliment one person on something like that was playing and then give me one sort of like what could be better for the next time so that way I can be a better game master and you know if there's something that we did that we usually try to like you know like watch people's faces but like it's if something happened that someone didn't want to say throughout like they can um, bring it up then or like they're like hey I want to do romance I'm like all right let's talk about that so um, yeah there's yeah. it's a again they're they're all these people are really I don't know I'm sorry I'm like Ooh, okay yeah they're all uh, <laughs> they're all they all have other jobs and they just happen to be they just happen they work hard and they're amazing at like just taking on like you know putting on a mask for a bit and like um, like I don't know. It's, it's, it's honestly a lot of escape right now. Like before it was like play. And now I feel like it's like play and escape. Like, Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> but what I'm Sorry, hearing in there too, I mean like, yeah, it's, it is play and it's escape, but also what I'm hearing in the way you talk. And, and again, this is what I think what I was so impressed by when I saw you working with children um, with the paper smalls workshop you did, which is a book you can get on Jen Fon's website. We're going to link to all these things in the show notes. Um, is you advocate for the people you encounter and you engage with. Like you're thinking, like I, you can see it happening in your head even when you're doing the big dungeon show is like mapping out like how are they going to react to this and how can I keep this thing thoughtful and engaging and but then also feeding, uh, getting feedback from them like you're saying at the end, having a cool down, like well, what's one good thing, what's one thing I could do better. You're making something and you're thinking about who it's for and that goes back to something Rob was saying just a minute ago about like um, personas, thinking about who are the parties who are already engaged with this thing, right? And so, like, you made this joke at the top, like, oh, well, it's called the Big Dungeon Show because I have, like, this big ego and whatever. But <laughs> that ain't it at all, right? Because, like, if it was all about, like, look at me, everybody, you wouldn't be so carefully thinking about who's going to interact with one another on the thing and how are people going to engage with it upon watching it, right? That ain't about you at all, right? That's you acting as a facilitator, as a, as a person who's showing up in the spirit of service. And that's the thing I want to unpack really bad on this one because I think that's, like, a really cool aspect of what you're doing 
And can we talk now just for a second about uh, the Very Very Shopping Network 2? Absolutely. Um, so uh, to catch anyone up the uh, rate, um, it was probably like a week and a half before Emerald City in this year. I was in Seattle and uh, living here, but I was just, and I saw all these people just dropping out, dropping out, dropping out. And I was just like, I don't think I can. And I had two tables, one for my art, one for my podcast, D20 Dames. And uh, I was just like, probably, probably can't do this. Like, I, I feel like it's just like, it's not safe. Um, but then I was trying to think of alternatives. And I saw a couple people people um, saying like, hey, I'm just going to stream all day from home. And I was like, well, that's cool with your like 12,000 or 12,000. Yeah, like even that um, like 20,000 followers on Twitter, like they will tune in. But I was like, well, we could just do it online. Like it's been done before, but I was like, mm, well, let's do it from a shopping network point of view because those are terrible and so much fun. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we're still working on getting like like graphics. So it's just like a scrolling number, you know, like if we eventually have people call in. But <clears throat> so we we did three days of uh, um, interviews with um, writers, artists, um, publishers, um, game designers, uh, people to make dice, like um, basically bringing the con experience to people um, or like walking through Artist Alley, which some people said was uh, nicer than a convention because um, they could hear better and they don't like to like like crowd at someone's table. Like they, we could go and we could talk for some, to someone for 20 minutes versus like the five minutes before you um, feel like the shame of I need to buy something, you know, kick in. So <laughs> um, yeah, and then creators got this. <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about? Especially I do. Cause like, especially because like we're cartoonists and we're like, oh, like, you know, you're like, whew, well, I haven't bought anything from... Uh, Leslie this year so I probably should like you know <clears throat> third show in a row <clears throat> so it's just it, yeah. it, what's cool but you're pointing out that there are like okay like there's obviously we're recording this at the time of the you know the the shelter in place the global pandemic is going on COVID-19 and there has been a rush to make video content on the internet. Let's just virtualize everything. And and I get it. Like that makes it's a natural and logical and obvious conclusion. Um, but what Rob and I talked about last week is like we both get a little nervous when somebody says, "Oh, we'll just make it video online, and then it'll just be the same thing, right?" And like, no, nah, there's got to be some pros <laughs> and cons to each. I'm sure there's an advantage to being physical and an advantage to being virtual. And he just pointed out one of the ma major virtual advantages is you don't get. Um, that awkward sort of tension of vendor and person walking by, you know, engaging with one another, right? It's like, I know you can't see me when I'm watching the, the shopping network, right? So if, I, <laughs> so if, if I'm, I'm not just, interested... I'm just sitting here with my card, passing judgment, and uh, yeah, I will not buy it for now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was also gonna say like now I could like more freely engage with the stuff that I do like because right, I don't right. have to like go past the sea of the character in the aisle hawking and waving the thing in my face. Um, it's a definite pro. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I was just wondering could be because there is really a natural switch when you when you go from uh, you know physical to virtual, where the the traversal judge of like, well, I'm in the space and I'm not paying attention to this. You know, I'm, it has this awkwardness to it, but then I, I thought for a second, is there, a, is there a digital equivalent to that? And I wonder if that's reaction videos. Where, <laughs> where, where it's where like, you just, no, no, I want you to see me. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? Like, like, no, let me, let me look at your comic, but you see me looking at your comic. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> or, hey, you know, hey. Um, what, one day I will I will get one of those. I'm sure Jersey. I'm sure you have a lot of, a lot of kids that are looking at yours, uh, your science comics, and be like, "Oh my god!" You know, like <laughs> not, not, not as much as I would like, but yes, yeah. yeah I get. It. Uh, but Some yeah, call so out to all the parents out there. Like, what are you? What else are you gonna do? <laughs> Film your kids. That's right. <laughs> Sell a book. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it would be a good. I, I get a lot of parents who actually like uh, message me and they're like, oh, we want to buy some of your mini comics for our kids while they're in lockdown. I'm like, mm, order my books online from like like Barnes and Noble. That would be a bit, bigger help to me. It's like you, I sell me I sell you my mini comic. I make two bucks. Maybe I only make a couple bucks off of science comics, but man, it brings my book scan numbers up. Please, everybody, parents, if you're mm. listening, book scan numbers they count. Um, <laughs> they <do>. So <laughs> I, I'm I'm curious about um, and again about this advocacy and and the second section of the show i think we're gonna like break down a little bit about like the different personas that and the different uh groups of people that you're trying to service through the, the, these things that you make but 
something that occurred to me when I was looking at the Very Very Shopping Network again, May first, everybody. Um, what is the what's the address? It's twitch.tv slash um, slash VV Spa. Very Very Spaceship Public Access. Uh, tw- <laughs> 12 to 4 p.m uh pt so pacific time yes so uh 3 p.m uh you know eastern time 2 p.m central Thank um you. <laughs> 1 p.m but, mountain come on there's people that live there oh that's right, that's right. <laughs> i have friends who live in mountain time yeah oh my to gosh like yes 80, i think i believe it's 85 or, or sorry it's 75 to 80 percent of the population lives in um uh central and eastern time zone so oh we'll see watch out social media hounds no <laughs> <laughs> but but as i was i was, I was looking at it uh, i was thinking like okay i used to do a show called comics are great which was a straight up interview show and the whole premise of it was i want to celebrate artists and i want to make them more visible to the public not in the form of, of like the standard interview of like what kind of tools do you use what's the hardest thing about what you draw I'm like i want to figure out what their central philosophy is and push on it and make them defend it in a playful joyous way right mm-hmm. and which it, it's a cool premise I, I i look back on the show and i'm really proud of it but it was a lot of work it was so much work researching and like trying to find something that's interesting, like that in, in that that context, right? That doesn't have like the basic one, two, three questions. So I am curious about the amount of prep that you got to do for a thing where you're going to have these artists come in and you're going to celebrate them in a thoughtful and meaningful way. I've watched Big Dungeon Show. I know you do this. What does the research look like when you're doing that? Um, for Big Dungeon, it's um, right about like halfway through the month is when I've already... Um, contacted the next group of people and like you know i again i have a, a working list um but we recently pulled a call put a call out and we will again you know like for people like hey if you want to be on you know like um but like i'll do like a little social media searching on them just to make sure um if i don't know who they are they haven't become problematic <laughs> or our problem you know um uh sort of and also looking for people that kind of have the same advocacy for others as well um, um but also like uh you know if they're um it, they don't have to be streamers. Like, um, it does help if they have like a webcam, honestly, like, you know, if, if, if I can't find video of them anywhere, that's the difficult part. And that's where I'm kind yeah. of like, uh, like, um, so there's a little bit of that. Um, as far as like the, uh, which game I have, like when I first sent good news, my producer, of like my, <laughs> my list, um, I had like 150 people on it and I had like two years scheduled out of like games because I was just like and I had like you know like this is sci-fi this is apocalypse western this you know like this is a fantasy but everyone's a sword or whatever you know just like so I because I was just like I want to play all these games but then it's like also shifting to make sure that like um uh, one of the big things was that uh we highlight um people of color um as designer game designers and uh people along the LGBTQIA um are in that community um and also women uh so um, focusing on that and making sure that you know like but like tales from the loop was so beautiful i was just like i want to play this there's not a lot of stuff on, about it online so it's also like looking to see if like if people have played a game before um mm. to see like not not like we need to be first but like you know it would help like it might it always helps the designer if you play their game so um and that's what we've discovered too is if we play a game that only like one or two people have made like they uh stump so hard for it that i'm just like and, the, you know, and they're usually just like ask me questions and i'm like i would never get this if I was playing a home game just being like oh what is what looks this part looks broken like or what you know whatever like mm-hmm. so I'm sorry I forgot the question uh oh, oh the research time, you do prep time yeah yeah uh yeah there's I would say it, it is a little bit of prep time I can it's a two-hour show so um and we try to I I kind of try, try to do one shots um obviously like the characters evolve their stories evolve but like as far as like narrative arcs I try to like always end it um maybe like the last show has like a big bad they met before in a different way but i know how long it takes to write those shows so uh or those adventures it's usually like four hours depending on like also like uh if there's a puzzle involved so like the other day i did a pinball one where they in the map was a pinball machine from a very popular mid-90s dinosaur you move it a little movie. bit more more to your left oh there we go yeah oh, that's awesome yeah, but as you can see, I hand drew it because I forgot all my digital stuff. But like, uh, you know, just like I was just like, uh, I can do this for an hour um, at night. And like, um, so, yeah. Um, but then there's, yeah, there's the social media stuff afterwards, like um, getting the, like I have some help from, uh, you know, my team. Um, but like trying to get like clips and stuff. There's like some of that, like I, I'm not like the best at yet. So like taking that extra time for very, very shopping network. 
we did that first one in a week. So it was basically just like, I went in, I said, you know, I was like, good news. Do you want to do this? And he was like, hell heck yeah. Sorry. I don't know your audience. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, hell is a perfectly, uh, usable yeah, yeah. word, but, but, but yeah, we do try to keep like PG 13 or oh, less. Yeah. yeah. Um, well <laughs> don't try this at home kids. Don't, do something solid for a week and not get any sleep. So no. <laughs> I was going to say, so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the real, uh, but so for this next one, we're only doing four hours instead of like 18. <laughs> yeah. So there's way less prep, but, um, we kind of like, you know, it was like a series of just like, Hey, like what can we do to make it better? Um, visually prep wise. Um, so like we had people like even practice calling in just so like they would understand that, like, I'm looking for something that's glossy. Uh, like, you know, sometimes if you hold up something like, like, you know, pointing at the ceiling, you'll, you'll get the gloss from or the glare from the light versus like aiming it down a little bit. So just like small stuff like that. Or if they haven't been interviewed on the stream before, we could like, I just want to run through a couple of jokes. So or mm -hmm. any questions. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I would say it is a lot of prep time, but I, I work at a company that supports this mission. Uh, and so they let me do it sort of alongside um, uh, my other work. So that's, I'm very lucky. Wow. So, uh, yeah, having some kind of institu institutional support goes a long way. Having a production team that you can rely on. Um, and, I mean, how, how, did, how did your relationship with Good News come about? I mean, are you just coworkers or, like, uh, how, yeah. like, okay. But, but, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, no, that's that's good. I mean, it's, but I'm, I'm also curious about, like, I'm, I'm just trying to, like, dig at this thing. I mean, I've got my own personal uh what am i trying to say motivations for this because like i a, a2 calf was canceled this year right and so it's like we're thinking about what kind of virtual things can we do and and like having put on that festival for 11 years it's like okay i know how to do recruiting i know how to find people who are the right thing for the job but this is a new kind of recruiting this is a and you were saying like okay you have to like look into do they have a web presence where i can find any video mm -hmm. do do they have any evidence that they know how to do any kind of live streaming, whether it's a camera looking on their desk or if it's them doing a, a digital version of that, because that is something that I find that not every cartoon, I have cartoonist friends who just like refuse to draw digitally, right? It's like they don't, they draw on paper, they scan it, they send it to the publisher. That's it. Dust hands, you know? Um, they live in non-humid climates, correct? Like, <laughs> like that was a big, a big jump for me because I was just like, you can't ink a page if it's like just, it's like a sponge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe they do. Well, some of them, some of them do. But anyway, yeah. It's a, um. So, but like, I've I've had like this this learning curve of like, okay, well, there are people who are not prepared to necessarily like just like turn on OBS and start using it, right? Or like, I have to like find ways to make this as um, simple for them to participate as possible, or find people who are like more a little bit more fluent in this landscape, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that's a hard, as an organizer, that's gotta be hard to figure out. Um, Cause yeah, you either you the, you take on the onus of the work or they do. So, mm -hmm. but you wanna like equalize the playing field a little bit, right? So maybe like if you know a creator, but you just don't, you don't have any evidence of it. Like, you know, you're just yeah. like, they can call on their cell phone because, as long as they like light it correctly because they are a colorist or something, you know, like, I'm, like right. I'm sure you can go with some gut stuff on some of that too. Yeah. So for the shopping network this year, how are you going to do that? Given that, you know, we're all in shelter in place still. Oh, um, yeah. So the first one, we did still have people coming in the studio. We had a lot of people call in, but then um, it was right before the uh, seriousness of it all. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, we yeah. still limited the people that came in and like, um, so, and we, we basically are, we have a meta narrative that we're on the ship to go again with very, very spaceship and that we couldn't get to the, the Comic-Con. Um, and uh, so we were beaming people in as hard light holograms or bringing them up on the video. So this time, uh, we our new narrative is that we are uh, stuck uh, in space, unable to get back to Earth because of the quarantine. So we're still on the ship, you know, um, Jaslyn. I'm sorry, Jaslyn is the um, co-host of the show. Uh, Jaslyn Stone, she is a comics marketer um, and video game marketer and fantastic person. So uh, her energy is wild. So the um, main reason I asked her to join and also she, we have a, we have like some overlap, but she knows other people in comics too. So, um, um, and we uh, work really well together. So like the way you and Rob do, like, you know, you can kind of like piggyback off each other. So um, I already, God, I've been talking too long. I can tell because I forgot the question <laughs> again. Um, but 
that's yeah. part of the exploration. That's part of the exploration yeah. is like, yes. you know, we, we, uh, we're just really curious. I mean, you've, you've got, you've put together a variety of these like really, you know, fascinating projects. And then the, uh, I, I guess the, so the, the very, very sh uh, shopping network is a, uh, uh, I'm sorry. So that one hasn't happened. You're talking sorry. about like, so maybe you've done a lot of work already or did a version already. We did. We did one in March um, um, during Emerald City weekend um, for three days, and then we're doing one. We're we're gonna start making it about pretty much monthly, but only gotcha. but much shorter. So that way, <laughs> we're not spending three days, you know, doing a lot of a lot of work. We can we can plan it out. It could we could be like we'll just like easily walk in and be like, oh, this again, you know, like as much as we can automate. So, well, all right, okay. and. Yeah. yeah Excuse my lack of preparedness there where the, the no, Emerald good. City one. Sometimes I go into like uh like like big media right for long chunks of time where I it's not like the Emerald anything City thing I heard about. I, I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, neat. And oh, yeah. anyway, then anyway. So it's but it's um so how how great like the it sounds like some of the learnings you you've applied from from that that big initial production uh are are gonna feed into this this next iteration. And is like how how does that work? Is that something that um do you do you meet with your whole team about that and how, uh, how's that go it's pretty much again good news and me and uh Jazeline, um we were like hey do you want to do it again and everyone was like yep and <laughs> i think i was like uh we should do it so what originally we wanted to do it like extremely monthly and just be like middle of april but you know stuff was happening and i was like well we should just push it and have it the day before what should have been free comic book day so yeah we can and we're going to highlight uh, more comic book stores this time as well as ways you can help comic book stores um, oh like, jen so, <laughs> so I, I i gotta pull up your twitter bio uh because like when i was you know gathering links for this episode uh i saw that i saw what you, you changed your twitter name too and i'm like yeah this is exactly right jen vaughn is fighting for small biz from home so good um and it, it just also I, means like spending any extra money on things and then, mm -hmm. you know, being like, oh, no, I have to pay my electricity. <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> I will support I love, everyone. <laughs> I, I love that cheerful. Oh, no. Uh, OK, so if I if I could also like look at. So here's another thing that I think is fascinating about the Very, Very Shopping Network and why everybody should tune in tomorrow, May 1st. Um, at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, and all the hours in between, um, is the one thing that when you do a one-to-one -one transfer of a Comic-Con to a virtual environment, the, the, the trickiest piece to transfer over is the commerce. And, you know, you've had things like, you know, some virtual Comic-Con landing pages where it's like, here's all the people that would have been at this show, and here's like a tiled kind of experience where you can, you can click and you can purchase. But the thing that doesn't get transferred over is you don't get that sales pitch, right? Because there are people who are really excellent behind the table, who are really engaging and dynamic in a non-threatening, non-confrontational way. They're very inviting. And, you know, it's like they don't get to do that now. You know, and so that's it's like the well, way some of us. Sorry, that's, that's the way those people sell money or sell, sell their books, too. Like, it's yeah. not necessarily off, like, people picking up going, I need this. It's like through the conversation. Yep. So it's this is terrifying. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, you're absolutely right. No, please, please do do interrupt me when I start, you know, when, when you've got something that you want to, you know, build on the conversation. Uh, or even if you don't, even if you just want to interrupt me to say, Jersey, come on. <laughs> I, I've, I've had people do that to me too. Like, they l l literally take my hand and they'll just like hold it for a second. Cause like, oh, no. it, <laughs> be I like, don't okay. remember what hand holding is, but uh, I'll imagine it. <laughs> oh yeah, that probably won't happen anymore. That's going to be a whole new thing where they just go like this. No. Yeah. Anyway, um. So you crack the code on this in a way in finding a fun, interesting, and like sort of uh, playful way to reintroduce that commerce in a way that is also, it's, it's like speaking to the advocacy. It's saying like, hey, we have to support these institutions and these people because it, a, an enormous part of their livelihood has been stripped from them. Mm -hmm. um, but you're doing it in a way that's celebratory, right? It's not, it's not the, uh, oh, how did that Simpsons joke go where... Um, Oh, what's her name from Golden Girls? Uh, it was on PBS doing a pledge drive. She's like, if you're watching PBS for free, you're nothing but a thief, you know? It's like this this, <laughs> this finger wagging. It was Betty White. It was Betty White. Betty White, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like this this very, like, you know, like, like sometimes those those PBS pledge drives get a little bit in that direction, right? Um, but this is not doing this. It's not saying, like, well, if you don't support these people, you're a monster. No, it's saying, like, no, let's celebrate these people because they're awesome. And let's do it in a very fun celebratory way. And let's make it an event that you have to tune into. It's streaming live. It's not just something that you just, like, tune in and tune out of whenever you want. Um, you know, it's it's it very much 
you found a way to package the free comic book day style of event into a virtual event. And the fact that you're doing it as an ongoing thing, I think is really, really cool. So what I'm hoping we could do in the second part, I've got to do an ad break just in a second here, mm -hmm. is like unpack a little bit of the thinking behind that and the different p communities you're trying to serve when you're doing that and how you think about that. Because this is something that Rob and I think about a lot when we're making things is like, who's it for? How does this benefit me? How does it benefit them? And how does it benefit everybody who comes into contact with this thing all, all along the way? Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, that's Let's see. You know, let's dive in after this ad break. <laughs> okay, it's about a minute and a half. Okay, we're gonna come back and talk about those things. But first, we have to thank some people who make this show possible, and those are the folks who support us on Patreon. Yes, Patreon.com/slash Lena Tart is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in Rob and Jersey, you believe in what we do, you can support us for as little as a dollar a month, and you can cancel at any time. So you could just sign up, check out all the behind the scenes stuff, and then punch out and come back again when you feel like supporting us again. But I want to thank five people who have been supporting us on an ongoing basis. So first up, Becca Hilburn. Thank you, Becca, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Becca on Twitter at Natto Soup. Actually, you can find Becca anywhere on the internet at Natto Soup. And Brandon Dayton. Thank you, Brandon. Longtime supporter of the show. Been on the show a couple times. You can find Brandon on Twitter at Brandon Dayton. And Gail Bushman. Thank you, Gail. You can find Gail's artwork on Instagram at Nightingale Art. And good to be curious. Thank you, good to be curious. You can find them on Twitter at, guess what? Good to be curious. And finally, India Swift, amazing animator and illustrator. You can find India on Twitter at Old Swifty. And you can join them all at patreon.com slash lean into art where you will find all the shows we make as well as the extra leans, the shows we record only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want in a safe place where fellow leaners are hanging out and it gets you access to special channels in the Lean Into Art Discord. It's patreon.com slash lean into art. Thank you to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot to us. It really does. It's a wonderful signal to get. Thank you so much. All right, then we got to hit some music to go to the second part of the show. What? And this <laughs> you just make me dance. You just like <laughs> It's joyful. It is. It's it's it, it's not meant to be forceful, Rob. <laughs> I can't it's make thing, you do it. I literally can't. I love that silly show. And that darn theme song is so. Mm. It's it's good. It's good music. <laughs> it gets the guests jump jumping. <laughs> okay. Well, now so, I'm all amped up. What, what are we doing here? To, uh, well, understand so, the audience. We've got three people here who all show up in the spirit of service and like really show up to say, like, how can we make this place better? Uh, for everybody involved, including ourselves, right? This isn't purely selfless. It's it's very much like we need each other. It's recognizing that, like we all need each other. Uh, so I'm curious, Jen, if we can unpack a little bit about who you're serving with the Big Dungeon Show, right? Because um, I would argue that it is a service, what you do with that. Um, so like, can we talk about like what you're, how do you think about the audience for the show, meaning the people who tune into the live stream. Like, is this a conversation you have with your team or is this something where you're more intuiting it? I, it, it is a conversation that I believe our studio head, Sean uh, Veshi, is always uh, uh, trying to realign me with just to make sure. Like, he's just like, have you thought about this? And I'm like, I have not. <laughs> or I have. And here's why we're not doing it. So, again, awesome. Uh, I am given uh, a lot of. Uh, rope to hang myself with or to lasso a win for the team so sorry that <laughs> metaphor really ran away from me like a wild stallion um but dark metaphors are so prevalent i don't know <laughs> I, at least yeah we're noticing um we yeah it, it's definitely again that that list of like games i had like you know looking at like who makes stuff and um because again i wanted to promote uh um, designers that are people of color, um, uh, women, people in the LGBTQA community, um, people that are basically not given the same chances um, and uh, to, um, promote like, because that, that it's also like a different type of game sometimes too. Like Dungeons and Dragons is built on like, you know, white European fantasies and um, very combat oriented to a degree, even though it, it's supposed to be like the three pillars are like social exploration and combat, which I actually feel like should be conflict because conflict mm. can be figured out in many different ways. It could be a dance off. It could be um, two people playing uh, um, some game that you've created a, a version of and uh, so as a puzzle of some type. So 
I feel like conflict is a better description of it because that's where tension comes in. You know, you know, narrative structure, Jersey, <sighs> you know. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure. But I just, I'm, I'm just wishing desperately that I could send you back in time to the early '90s when I was role playing in high school with guys who were just very much about like <gasps> dungeon crawl, kill the monster, get the thing. What you want to have a character who is exploring some kind of like em- emotional or. Uh, um, like relationship uh, narrative structure, get out. What are you doing here? You are banned. <laughs> I mean, I, th- there's a place for it and there's certainly ages for it too. Like that's the thing, like, you know, like that. I'm not saying like no game should, like there's definitely amazing games that are out there, you know, and like the the thought process that go into making these the systems and the mechanics. So, because they, um, it's, you know, it's like learning a different language. You learn more about a when you learn a different language. You learn more about a culture because um, of the way phrases are used, and um, not just like subject verb order and stuff, but like um, the what is important and what is um, like sort of sloughed off to the side. And I feel like games are exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's like you just demonstrated. It's seeing the framing of the purpose and how it flows and whatnot. Like those words, that vocabulary matters a lot, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting. So it sounds like uh, that's that's a huge interest of yours, and you're being be, being an advocate and being able to bring that to the community. Uh, and it sounds like, in a way, like are you as you, Jen, are um, is it a practice for you as well? Like this, this sounds like a ton of research about like mm-hmm. finding these games and like like really digging into them and um, considering the cultural aspects of every, everything. Is this I mean, like super love- fun for you. Oh, oh, it's oh, it's very much fun. Don't for a second think it's not fun. <laughs> I am getting away with highway robbery. I hope no one from work is watching. No, uh, it's uh, it it's definitely, but it it definitely is work just because like um, in certain ways, just making sure that um, uh, I, the last game we played uh, uh, by Orion Black, um, who is a black non-binary designer in the United States, um they created this gorgeous, gritty game um, where um, the stories of marginalized people are told through the lens of uh, mutants, including like um, mutants that have even been like, they're forced to live in these uh, mutant safe zones. Um, and I wanted to play this game because it is important and it is really gorgeous. It was a forged in the dark variant. So everyone's just rolling D6s and like um, they can like burn extra dice to like improve their role and like take on stresses and stuff. But um, even I can't play that game to the fullest extent, um, you know, as a, as a, a white um, cisgendered uh, female. So um, it's important to show off these games so that people can play them at home um, and like live within that space and realize maybe if they don't already that like there's um, you, you will never get it. You will never understand. So that, I think that's the difference between like certain parts of woke culture is like there's white people um, that think they are woke and there's white people that realize they will never get it and so it's sort of like trying to show off that to the audience and we've had a lot of people that have um uh the viewers and especially a lot of white males um that are just like I would never played this game but like it's very interesting and now I'm like following this creator and so that's the sort of feedback where I'm like yes like but also you know we want it to be fun too so that's sort of like where the play comes in and definitely where the people that we bring on the show um shine as well um but there there also be we you know we I try not to have like more than one other white person on the show if I can, um, to be honest, but that doesn't always work out with scheduling and stuff too. But it's, it's like, I want to promote the diversity in the community and give, um, and you know, also like pay people for their time. Mm. Not to give you my entire business practice. Sorry. No, no, no. I, you share whatever you feel comfortable sharing. I, I, I don't, I'm more personally interested in just that philosophical approach of having a clear sense of how do I want to advocate for these people? Like everything I heard in there is that you're advocating for the participants in this thing too. So it's not just the audience. Like, yes, I want the audience to learn. I want them to have a richer experience with this, this thing called gaming. Um, But I want the people who are participating in the game to all be felt that, that I have done my part to uh, celebrate them in a way that now the audience will have more of a meaningful interaction with them going forward. Did I just characterize that well? Yeah, yeah. I, and, I, and I think it's sort of, I'm trying to, uh, Chris Robertson, who wrote iZombie, that uh, comic series, I um, he said something once that I, I took to heart and it was like, he's like, I can totally write um, 
a story about a black girl being a superhero. I can't write a story about a black girl who um, during the civil rights movement though and how she's feeling. Like there's like those things where it's like you let you let people shine and you you bring people to the forefront, um, but you you don't you don't always know or you can't know all their experiences. And so with that, that's why we also try to bring on guest uh, DMs or GMs um, to run the show. And occasionally, um, and especially now that we're doing it all online, we can uh, bring in the actual game designers too. So I've been mm. like reaching out. So some of the ones in the past too, and being like, hey, would you want to come on? And they're like, yes, like you know, frothing. And I'm like, yes, like because <laughs> <laughs> again, it's like. Um, it's an outlet for them. Um, they get to show off the show. And I, we're obviously not as big as like Critical Role, you know, but it's like uh, we, we have a busload of people that watch. If you, you know, think about how numbers work, like, do you have a, a mom van, a dad van? Do you have a bus? Do you have a movie theater? So, yeah, we're, we're at bus level. That's pretty good. <laughs> that is cool. I do like I like being reminded of that. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Like, well, you know, if you establish success criteria, do we have a busload? Yes, we do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. No, but Am I, my coworkers I, I do... watch anymore? No, but that's okay. That's on them. Uh, no. I just, I just want to underline this, and I want to put it in front of everybody who's getting ready to do a virtual event. I want to like s- s- look at what Jen is thinking about. Look at what Jen and her team are thinking about. Is this idea of how do we create? rich, meaningful interaction, thoughtful interaction with things, right? Because a lot of times, I mean, I've been involved in enough different teams of people trying to create things, uh, whether it's a comic book or a festival or or, um, even, you know, like a a podcast project. And there's this sense of, it's going to be cool if we do this thing, right? It's like, Mm -hmm. yeah, it could be. (laughs) It could be very cool. (laughs) But like, they're not thinking about, or they're not articulating. Let me put it that way. They are thinking, I think they're intuiting, but not articulating what it is that we're trying to get these different constituencies to experience through the thing that we're making, right? Rob, you looked like you had a thought. Uh, Well, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, you're you're, you're really... um... I'm hearing so many things about how you think about this very holistically, right? Yes. And yes. that sounds incredibly informative and useful for anyone tackling this where uh, many people are in a circumstance where they need to do some kind, need or want to do some kind of virtual event. And it could be through, yeah, like a necessity of like, well, we had a physical, you know, in, in a space event and and we still want to exist and accomplish our mission. Or it could be, you know what, we weren't realizing that it, the just in following inspiration, seeing seeing great, you know, Jin Show and and uh, the uh, uh, you know anything and the 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 shopping network, right? Where someone's like, "Ha ha, you re- wait a minute," and then you know, it, there's a lot there's a lot behind there. So hearing the, your holistic thinking is, I think, a way to say like, yeah, buying a you know metaphorically like buying a guitar doesn't mean you're going to be in a successful band um, or. <laughs> You know what I mean? Just says the person with multiple guitars behind them. Go on, yes. <laughs> yeah, did I, is my is my um are my issue are my issues showing? Um, yes, your unbroken <laughs> dreams just spilled out of your pockets, <laughs> or your broken sorry, dreams I'm, rather. I'm sorry, you just set it up for us. We couldn't. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm happy to to uh, to, to model uh, you know, emotional resilience and. Stuff like that. Please, so, please, please. I I have dropped deadlines. Are you kidding? Come on. There's yeah. We 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 only learn by failing. But <laughs> right on. So, uh, yeah. So, like, so I have some of the holistic thinking and all uh, that, that you're bringing there is, is, uh, it's wild. Like, so seriously, like, there's a front stage part of your team, right? The people you're recruiting to do the performance and stuff that, that includes you. There's the, um, uh, the, all the, the, the de- development and like curation and, and uh, of like what game and then creating the, an experience for that game and whatnot, which is, which is pretty, I think transferable in a way because uh, growing up, I did a lot of role playing and I super missed it. And actually, watching the the Big Dungeon show, it super it, I had a lot of feelings because I'm like, God, I missed that. Oh my God. So, um, but I'm also like setting that aside. Is so you have front stage team, backstage team, uh, game designers who can be part of either front stage or backstage team and whatever. So there's so many different interesting constituencies. And you think about. Um, whether implicitly or explicitly, like what's the, what's a, you know, what's a, you know, what's your intention or goal in, in all of these different roles and how much do you think of um, like going through this effort and like how can all these different groups succeed? Uh, like, how do you get your sense of that? 
not all the groups succeed. I mean, success for the game designers to me is more people know their work, um, hopefully are buying a couple copies as well. Um, but then they can also link to these videos um, and, use, and some of them will put them on their um, itch pages. Itch.io is where like a lot of people sell their RPGs. And I will say when I, some of these games are, especially on itch, a lot of them are more in a, um, not nascent stage, but they are like the first draft. Um, and so we are play testing as well for some of them um, in a way. So that's because a lot of itch is like buying a game where you're like, I love this present or the, um, the world building. I love the concept. Um, but you're also, it's also, a, it's to borrow your word, a service to the game designer because by you sending them five to $10, you're giving them time to continually develop this game. Because again, a lot of the um, people that are on itch, they're just posting, like they get all the money as well from the sales too, like, um, which is fantastic. So, um, but for the designers, it's, I hate to be such a capitalist about it in the end, but like, it's, I want them to sell. I want them, people to like know their names and like follow them on social media. Basically like those are the big three. Um, mm -hmm. For the, for the, um, excuse me, for the uh, players, it's partially, it's like follow them online as well. Some of them are game designers as well. So it's, um, and then like follow them throughout the other shows. Cause some of them are on other uh, streams, you know, make comics, like maybe um, there's one, maybe from chat's perspective, there's like one player every month that they're just like, that's a person that I'm into now. And it's like, yes, like I've done my job as like, a like check out for this person who says they're my friend, you know, like pulling the curtain back. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's good. Um, obviously for like good news and I, it's like, did I prep enough and give him stuff on time? No, uh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's honestly the best because uh, he, um, uh, tells me exactly what he can and can't do uh, and uh, and is also like working on ways to like um, increase our production values um, whether it's new cameras or we've been talking about adding uh, captions to um, on the videos and stuff so that way um, it opens up uh, watching for hard of hearing people mm. um, uh, and then I guess for um, but from a very very spaceship uh, from our point of view um, or VV spa technically if you think of the streaming as aspect is slightly off um, like a like one wing of the ship or what you know like magnetized on top of the, the spaceship uh terrible metaphor again um <laughs> it's a uh, it's sort of just promoting like what we're doing because we're working on a game that's you know who knows when it's going to come out so these are, it's like a way for us to show off one of the ways like hey look what we support um our ideals um the fun that we are you know hopefully fun um <laughs> so uh that we're we're creating and having um and by um putting out that um that sort of, uh, I hate to use the word, putting out that content um, sort of like um, is something that people can look at, um, you know, when our games come out and be like, oh, they, you know, they constantly do some stuff, you know, it's not just like this one game is not the only thing to solely judge them on as well. So not to be like a group of kids at a lunch table going like, please like us, but you know, sort of that. It's probably there too. <laughs> it's so reasonable and realistic, though, that, that you have uh, all these different perspectives that you've woven together, that I think it's easy to get excited and maybe, uh, like, with good intentions, just sort of uh, jump in without thinking through some of those things. So yep. I, I appreciate you unpacking all that and sharing it, because um, because I think other organizations can learn from that. And uh, definitely, you can find a way to accomplish your mission and goals and... Uh, and consider all those other, you know, uh, partners, collaborators, and everything. You can consider this interconnected bunch of people and organizations, and it's okay to to like, uh, well, to to have commerce in mind because this is, I mean, I, that that's sort of a cognitive dissonance thing that I think a lot of artists deal with, where it's like, well, I, I get uncomfortable when I talk about my stuff, and and uh, you know it realistically that's part of the whole thing of like if you care about your art you got to care about that too because how does it get in people's hands how do you have the ability to put time into it and, and keep that's awesome anyway so it, yeah. it, but it is, it is i think i think that's your point though is that or to your point it's hard to stump or it's hard to advocate for yourself so if you can be on like a group setting like very very shopping network tomorrow boom um or uh <laughs> going to uh, tune in everyone yeah, yeah. who's hearing this <laughs> needs to tune in this sounds super yeah. cool but that, 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 like, that's the, the part where like Jaslyn and I can like talk about how amazing you are and like um, our mods in chat will like, you know, be like, oh, you know, like they, they react wildly when they love something, which is great. So, but I think that's the, that's the thing is like, 
working with people. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, and shout out to Callie Castle, um, who uh, helped design our, or who made or design our website and uh, is helping me update this page as well. So we will have some cool clickable tiles <laughs> that people can go to, to directly go to the artist website and also sort of serve as like a capsule of like past shows and all that stuff. So um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh my gosh, again. Um, but no, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's all of that. It's, it's everyone also like taking on the learnings of what, what's happened before. Like Good News worked with a lot of the um, other team members at Very, Very Spaceship on some projects where um, on Mixer, where they were like working on this interactive game, uh, We Are Jake, and like people would um, give them feedback and they could change it and the next day have it like ready to go. So like all this sort of like uh, easily wow. not like pivot pivot fast um, sort of mindset and like being flexible and um, experimenting in the end. So well, so if if I could poke at that idea just real quick because I think that's fascinating. What I you are, you do some kind of like uh, what what would you call it a, a period of reflection like a, a thoughtful pause to like reflect on the thing you just did to say like okay how did this go how do we all feel about it how can we make it better do you actually have those kinds of meetings with your group your team oh oh yeah. Um, our studio head, Sean Veshi, uh, we have those um, probably like every three to four months, depending on um, like, you know, is it the holidays? <laughs> but like, yeah, and we we do like, um, like going <clears throat> going over the game build, it's like, okay, what did we do great? What challenges do we have ahead of us? And then like, um, and then what were the surprises or like, um, like the things that we didn't even think about, but that somehow worked. So like that way we can move forward. Um, in a way, or, um, you know, scrap something too. Um, mm. Where I think it's a wild team of uh, makers, people that enjoy making things with their hands, like, you know, 3D printing, like doing all sorts of fun stuff. And then also um, people that are uh, willing to try something, fail, and then be like, no, nope, that's fine. We learned this X, Y, and Z. Uh, and, uh, that sounds so it, healthy. That sounds so great. I mean, it's a little bit hard for a writer where I'm just like, all right, here's all my work for the week. Judge me, you know, like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can only use English, so there we are. No. <laughs> like, no, but yeah, it's a, it's a. I'm again very lucky, and um, uh, I feel like only good things will be coming from very, very. Sorry, I shouldn't like jinx it. Um, <laughs> only interesting experiments will be coming from very, very spaceship. There it is. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, it sounds like a great team and some some great uh, techniques to practice and whatnot too. Also. Uh, it makes it more attainable. Like this, like everyone could figure, I, th I believe that anyone who needs to do this kind of virtual event can find their their voice and purpose if they choose to, to be thoughtful about it. And, uh, and they're probably going to be more likely to succeed if they're willing to do uh, some experiments and then keep learning from this practice and not expect themselves to just show up and instantly be as great as the thing that inspired them. Oh, mm. boy, yes, that is for sure. Um, Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's like an example of an artist, Pop Muertos, who went from drawing uh, on his Twitch Twitch channel, which I think is just twitch.tv slash Pop Muertos. He went from drawing longer things to doing like five minute sketches. It's like what he could do within the time. Um, but his art style lended itself to it. And it's very gorgeous. So that way people could like see an entire drawing in that five minutes instead of like some people who um, have, you know, such intense line work or whatever that you're like, I forgot what happened and my, my lunch is cold now. I'm like, you know, sitting there for an hour. So he, he leaned into the thing that um, worked best for him, which I think is the other thing is the part of the experimenting is like, you know, just because someone is, yeah, is good at this X, Y, or Z doesn't mean you are, but you know, it's just, it's practice too. Also like Jersey, you, you love OBS, right? You love overlays. So, you know, like it's not a learning process at all. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 that was that was literally our setup for the show today. Was me like, hey, I learned how to do a new thing. Let me do it real quick on, I mean, before yeah, we start streaming. That's awesome. Like that's that's what it's about. Well, yeah, I mean that's something that I think Rob and I have like modeled a lot on the show. Is like we genuinely enjoy like something I say in my classroom. Like whatever, I, and I I apologize to the Lean to Art listeners who have heard me say this a bunch of times, but I literally have them sit in a semicircle, crisscross applesauce, and I say and these are like fifth graders, and I say like there's three sort of like rules to being a cartoonist. And one is that we support each other. We don't tear each other down. And two, it's awesome to not know something because not knowing something means you're going to learn something and level up at something. And I never want to stop leveling up. So if you don't know how to do something, ask. And then the third rule is if, if uh, help is asked for and you know the answer, help them. Um, 
But like, I, I think that that's, it, it would be such a dull existence if we didn't have, <laughs> if, if, if we, like, I talk with teen students and they're like, oh, I just want to get to the point where I'm like at a professional level and I don't have to worry about this anymore. I'm like, what? Why would you want that? You're asking for purgatory if you, if you want that, you know? <laughs> And I could see how you could get to that thought because it sounds really romantic and effortless to just do amazing stuff without having to think about it. But that sounds awfully boring to me. So, I yeah, I, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I do like the workhorse aspect sometimes of just being like, well, I'm just going to do the thing. And, you know, but then it's mm -hmm. like, no, wait, pause. Think about the thing. Will it benefit from? Yeah doing it differently. I understand. I get it. Oh my gosh, Jen, you are so great. Well, <laughs> please. I, just, I mean, you're saying that because the hour's almost over, so you know, <laughs> I'll be nice on the outros, but yeah. <laughs> hey, don't, don't show my stagecraft off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but seriously, it's just, it's just, it's so refreshing to engage with more people in the community who actually stop and have that purposeful moment to like think about what what, what is the thing we're making and who we're making it for and how can we make it as good as possible because i think this is important to understand and to make um explicit is that is such a um a useful way to disengage your ego from the art it's not all about me it's about all these other pieces together that work together to make this thing and yes i i get to be proud of my participation in this thing and i get to accept the high fives when they come in um but it's it ain't all about me i'm not the only thing right like rob and i talked about this recently on the show like there was a we've heard artists in the past who like achieve a certain level of success and they say like well if you just make good work and put it out there success happens i'm like yeah well <laughs> what a what a privileged answer they must be white like good god like oh my god yeah, maybe just do, but, do good work and people will, will find you i'm like and it's like it's Whoa. a perfectly like human way to look at things like well it worked for me so why wouldn't it work for you In failing to acknowledge all of the various you know luck skill you know pre pre-built in sort of privilege or whatever there's a lot of factors, right? And so it's just, it's it's nice to talk with people who are thinking about it holistically, realizing that this is an all interconnected thing. This is something Rob and I talk about on the show for, how many years have we been doing the show, Rob? <laughs> uh, eight, almost nine. What? Almost nine years. Oh. So yeah, so it's, it's a topic we're really passionate about. And I get really excited when I meet people who are like, you know, they, they can... Uh, explain not explain it what was the word i used for earlier rob make it explicit you know i love that all right uh jen is there anything else that you wanted to point people at or um that we didn't talk about today um i would say check out uh very very spaceship's website uh vv spaceship um slash oh sorry vv spaceship dot website that's it and uh you can oh thank you yes we do have the very very shopping network too Tomorrow, um, Snoot again made this wonderful graphic. Um, at that stars um, several people: um, Henry Barajas, uh, Jade Fen Lee, Andrew Dimanakos from White Squirrel, who will be teaching people how to make a, a web store. So if you haven't made one yet, um, sell your work. Um, we also have people on from 28 Pages Later, who will be um, sort of a nonprofit talking about um, how to help out your local comic stores. We also have local comic book stores, Arcane Comics. Um, from Seattle area, uh, Books with Pictures from Portland that's been doing sort of like cool bike deliveries. Um, yeah, this is a shot from our last show, um, my little terrible uh, shopping cart logo. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think we accidentally stuck to this Emerald City Green. Uh, they can't sue us. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, for now, oh, we'll change it next time. But yeah, and we also have people coming in from uh, IDW Comics or uh, Publishing because there's a new uh, Gumroad that's out uh, so that you can purchase uh, or pre-order and it's called insider art and it's an anthology um, featuring um, uh, all women and uh, the it's a uh, comics really good ones um, uh, I'm not sorry really good ones except for mine we'll say that boom <laughs> caveat it um, but the money goes towards um, people who own uh, comic book stores that are women and non-binary so um, mm. sort of help them out in this time as well so sorry there's a lot of information but uh it will be doing like cool deep dives. We also have um, some fun commercials from other people. And uh, yeah, um, there's, I would just say also um, subscribe or like twitch.tv slash VV Spa. Cause we do a lot of fun uh, events and other people do it. Like uh, we have Galen Drew who does like cool looping with musical stuff. I don't understand. Um, 
Ava lays it out. She uh, makes a, she works and builds a circuit board on the stream. Like again, yeah, like incredibly smart people. I just occasionally make words sound good. So I'm very excited to be with, again, always work with smarter people than yourself is my mm. final say. <laughs> That, that, that is an exciting room to be in when you're surrounded by people who are, you know, smarter, smarter. And, yeah. and, and think really hard. I think that's mm -hmm. that's that's like catnip. That, that's the best drug. Um, yes. Also, I am sorry we should have uh, hosted this. Uh, I'm now realizing, well, next time. <laughs> what? You should have hosted oh, what? the Twitch thing where you, where you can host. another. Oh. Ah. Yeah, we should also. Host, I'm so sorry. I... <laughs> oh, no. Well, this is. Learning yeah, the, in in real time. <laughs> same here. Same here. It's uh, yeah. There's a lot of different platforms and stuff going on, and and uh, there's uh, there's always yeah. Uh, somehow th uh, this I take so many notes, and it's it and it doesn't even help. Um, I would still forget things. So, uh, <laughs> what? Um, let's see. So you got vvspaceship website. You've got uh, let's see twitter.com <clears throat> slash big dungeon show and. Uh, twitch.tv slash vv spa which is the big event for tomorrow so mm -hmm. um yeah, lots and also on. if you want to watch any of the old dungeon shows we have them at um just a bit.ly slash big dungeon show Whoa. all lowercase or all uppercase i did i, I got them all so um <clears throat> but yeah and we play everything from a pillion where people everyone's a dragon to uh again our haunt where everyone's a ghost tales from the loop stuck in like crazy 80s with a robots everywhere and like aliens um yeah a lot of fun stuff so um the next one i will say will be a sci-fi one i don't i'm not announcing it yet <laughs> i'll have to tune in and That's right. see what's next <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to take one more break, and then we're going to come back with a two-minute practice. Now, Jen, once again, you are free to, if you need to go, uh, you can go. But if you want to stick around and chat with us about the two-minute practice, uh, you're welcome to. So, Yeah, I'll stick uh, around. Absolutely. Thank you again okay. for having me on and letting me talk about all my stuff. I appreciate it. Uh, I mean, as it, it, dumb as it sounds... Thank you just for being who the heck you are. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, in, thank you, Jen. This has been awesome. That's, that's really like, we're learning a ton by by just uh, just uh, yeah. You th it's, it's, thanks for being here and and be willing to share so much of what you've been puzzling out with these virtual events. Super Thank helpful. You. Okay, so we're gonna come back in about two minutes to talk about mm -hmm. what the two minute practice is for this week. The two minute practice being this ongoing, you know, rotating challenge that Rob and I give to ourselves and offer to the world to engage with something that you are. Le leveling up in an affordable way in two minutes at a go. But before we do that, we got to thank some more people who make the show possible. And those people are us. We make the show possible. We make all sorts of neat things. And then we think really hard about the stuff that we make and bring those th those thoughts and those topics to this project we call Lena to Art. The thing that I make that I hope you will check out today is a comic book. It's a web comic right now. Uh, called Nightmare Pro Wrestling, and it's written by a friend of mine, John David Guerra. And what is it? Well, Nightmare Pro Wrestling, what is it? Is that like Dracula's and Frankenstein's and Mummies and Wolfmen wrestling? Yes, that is exactly what it is. And John has launched this new sort of uh, WrestleMania event called the Belly of the Beast, and I um, I drew the first match between uh, it's a tag team match with Grave and Lobo, a skeleton and a werewolf, who fight against the Pumpkin Boys, two pumpkin-headed monsters. And we're 15 pages in. He's dropping five pages a week on Wednesdays. My story's almost over. And then the next match is taken over by another artist. And so it's like sort of handed off from artist to artist, but it's all written and colored by John. It's You can find it at NightmareProWrestling.com. I'm very proud of this comic. I had a lot of fun doing it. It celebrates everything I love to draw, dynamic action, movement, cool sound design, and really silly, fun monsters. Uh, NightmareProWrestling.com. Rob, you have a store. I do. It's uh, robstenzinger.com slash store.html. And I offer a variety of products and services. A lot of them are online workshops that uh, you can you just purchase as one-offs or go to skillshare.com. And uh, that's kind of like a Netflix of different learning content. And you can, you know, just get this because you have one of those accounts. If you sign up for Skillshare through one of these links, I think you'd get uh, two free months as well. So yeah, there's uh, drawing user journey maps to design user experiences, gather ideas and collaborate. Uh, there's customizing your next creative challenge and two others, uh, goal setting using design plus storytelling and then uh, sketching the happiest kitty in the universe. So all kinds of things. If you're looking for something just uh, more relaxing, uh,
playful thing all the way up to, you know, planning some life goals or collaborating. Got a lot of stuff here for you. So check it out, robstenzinger.com slash store.html. And the last thing we hope you will check out is the Lean Into Our Discord. Yes, we have a forum now. There's a Discord server, and the invite link will be in the show notes for this episode. And every episode, there are three public channels where you can request topics, um, make comment on past episodes, and post some of your two-minute practices. And then there's three channels that are only for pe people who support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash art. We thank everybody who's been engaging with us in the Lean Into Art Discord. It is awesome to get to know you a little bit better there. All right, mm -hmm. Rob, is it time for the two-minute practice? I think it is. All right. Hi, Rob. Hey, Jersey. <laughs> and welcome, Jen, who's hanging out with us for <laughs> two-minute practice. I'll be creepily watching. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which this becomes its own little micro-podcast, too. So, yeah, uh, uh, Jen Vaughn of the Big Dun Jen Show and uh, all sorts of awesome things, the... Uh, the QVC style shopping network, which is uh, very uh, twitch.tv slash VV spa. So Jen, uh, you're, you're a narrative designer and writer and whatnot too, and of many other creative accomplishments. So if you have any reactions, we'd love to hear it as we share what we practiced last week. And we think of another thing. So you're welcome to. Uh, yeah. If, if you, if you want to GM us, you know, throw out <laughs> a, a challenge on, on the table. Ooh. It's so tempting. All right. I'm excited. Okay. But tell me first, what did you do last week? <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, it's like, it's, it's like you host things all the time. Uh, <laughs> Segway city. <laughs> <laughs> so last week, Rob came up with the idea of just picking two things and writing a conversation between them based on, I was ruminating on how eh, it's not like you can like do a draft of a script or an outline for a story two minutes at a time. Like, I just didn't see how that was possible. And so then Rob, you know, impishly said, wow, you could do a conversation. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess you could. I only got one session done, Rob, this week. I'm, it's, it's, uh, life, life did its thing. Um, so I, but I did put in the two minutes and I was surprised with how much I got done in two minutes. Um, and the, if I had a takeaway from that one session, it was that the ticking clock, instead of making me anxious, it made me let go of trying to write brilliant stuff. Um, it was like, how, how good can you do in two minutes? You can't. You're not going to write Tolstoy in two minutes. So just let it go and just like listen to what the characters should be saying to each other. Um, and I posted my results in the Lena Tart Discord, and I just chose some of the characters from that Baron Von Bear pitch that I'm hoping to sell someday um, and just picked a, a moment in the story that I want to do about them and just started going. So I got like, I think like essentially two panels worth of comics conversation done with very, very loose sketches. Um, but yeah, it, it didn't take a whole lot of like psyching myself up to be like, okay, don't worry about making it good. It's like, well, how good can it be? It's impossible. So it can't be, therefore go, right? Is this the first time the premise of the two minute practice actually worked? <laughs> It might be because like, well, in, to give extra context to the way I engaged with it, I find writing like actual dialogue and conversation between characters so much more challenging than almost any other part of making comics. Like writing characters talking to each other with a voice that speaks from some kind of like inner truth of, of their own worldview takes so darn long. Like that's a part of the process where I do a lot of pacing in the studio and it looks like I'm not doing anything, but I'm just like letting my brain do its thing while I just move my body mindlessly, you know? So it was already, it's like, it was like, but you could have asked me like fix a car in two minutes. Well, it can't be done. <laughs> so might as well just go in there with a wrench and start hitting things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's great to hear. I mean, in a way it, it, it's intended to be empowering and playful. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but what was your experience? I, I, I was able to, uh, get, get four sessions in and, um, it was, uh, I do my thing where I, I hack creative challenges. I, I know I said, I'm the one who said to have two objects talk or whatever. And well, it turns out the objects were in my heart. There were two characters that were, uh, that I haven't had, I haven't written for in a long time. 
um, you know, well, Pick Wingve, the the talented penguin guitarist with stage fright, and Crunchy, the mystical guitar, his, you know, magical guitar friend. And I just let things come out of my head and typed, and it mm. worked okay. I, I, I was freed from pressure by just, um, I had no idea. I like looked at my desk and I thought, who's, what's going to talk to what? And it's, and it just all of a sudden pick and crunchy were there and, uh, that's it. They started talking and I just kept to that for, for four sessions. Hmm. And so how, what was, what's your thousand foot view takeaway? How, how, if you could characterize the experience in a few words, what would it be? Well, I feel, um, hmm. I, it's so there's the meta about the practice where it's like, what's good, who's going to talk, who, what's going to come out of my head when it's like, okay, there's two minutes and, and it's odd that, and makes sense that those characters came to me. So it was like, um, it was like being saved by two familiar voices in my head. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. And, and then I was able to just play with those voices and a situation popped out after you know because in a way i was asking them so the first couple lines here for uh let's see uh pick says is that you crunchy where have you been why did you leave and it's like me asking myself why did i stop writing you you guys oh, yeah, i don't know yeah. and uh and crunchy goes kiddo you are so old <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah and, and it goes on from there and and so then pff, I didn't know that came from nothing or something. Yeah. Well, you sure, sure. inside of me. It, it's it, the experience I always think of. It was it was instructive to me, and it was me helping another artist. So it was like it was like me inadvertently teaching myself. Is that we were sitting down at, like for an art challenge at a two calf one year, and I was watching this person next to me like really like just like freezing at in, with the blank paper, and I was like just put some lines down, throw a line on that paper, and let it in that something will happen. I promise. And I, it made me realize that like so much of that like what Pressfield called the resistance is like just that fear of like well I'm, I'm going to do it wrong. Well the right way will reveal itself if you start throwing down the wrong lines. And that's what drafting is all about, right? Like doing drafts of things. Um, mm. But like that, that I, and I encounter that every darn project. I've been doing this 20 something years now and every project is like, it's inescapable. So it's like the only defense against it is to throw some lines down. Whether, even if it's just crunchy, is that you? Where have you been? Okay. Now we've got something, you know? So yeah. Jen is nodding. Started pulling. Yeah. So, so what, what I, I, I feel validated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's, I, I love this exercise too. Uh, it, it reminds me of a book called Hello, My Name is Red by Orphan Pamuk, mm. um, Turkish writer, where it's a, the entire story is told by objects in a man's room. Mm. So multiple mm. POVs. Um, when he said it, I was just like, yes, two objects. <laughs> what are they saying behind your back? Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> immediately go to juvenile way so no, um yeah. yeah that's a great exercise like divorcing yourself from certain things as well and yeah yeah so, yeah and oh, and and reminding yourself that like creative ideas like the the beginning of creative ideas are like well to use a word we used at the top of this uh lena tart episode ubiquitous right mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're everywhere it's just like it's just a matter of like just tuning your eye to see them or at least ex letting yourself listen for them so rob what do you want to do with this week's challenge uh practice hmm. i am let's see i i'm feeling an urge to like help me out here i'm 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 maybe putting like a a, a thing to a crete i don't know but uh oh what if there was a gameful aspect to it which we've experimented with some randomality mm -hmm. and you know because we've got uh uh, Jen Vaughn here think we're I'm thinking like is there a like if right. this is almost role-playing ish this what we just did but is there a way to amp that up somehow do you mean like game it up structure wise like draw like, one page comic that you can read from the beginning to the end or the end to the beginning and it makes sense both ways <laughs> whoa <laughs> <laughs> Oh my um, gosh. Oh, that, that, is, that is so good. Yeah. But yeah. You can well, do what it. if, yeah, it what, be like a three so, panel comic. It doesn't have to be like a, you know. 
so that's like a comics with comic with um a loopishness to it right so mm-hmm. it's sort of a the uh, situation starts and stuff happens and the it goes full circle in my hearing is that right? yeah 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 and also yeah. like if you're reading other languages and you're reading um right to left maybe you just boom like start that way um but it all still works out mm. <laughs> So it's like two, a two minutes at a go. Comic mirror. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah. I forgot it was two minute thing. <laughs> well, but no, but accreting is like you could be like okay, it's, say it's gonna be four panels. You could have two minutes. It's like we did do a challenge a couple weeks ago where like it was like do a single drawing two minutes at a time, and I got almost done with a, like a, a pretty decent sized drawing. Yeah, like two minutes at a. Those, so. those bursts. What is that? The, what's that? The the Pomodoro method is like doing things in like fifteen or twenty five minute bursts, and then giving yourself yeah. a solid break. Because yeah, this otherwise you're micro finding... Pomodoro. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, the two minutes is great though. I, yeah, I'll I'll do whatever you do. How about that? So what? Like, what oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm right. also I'm also moving this weekend, so I'm not saying I'm gonna get a lot of two minutes in, <laughs> but I will definitely try. <laughs> Fine. While I'm driving. Um. Well, or what about um? Sorry, you're talking about gaming. So like um. Oh, add, adding a, a sense of randomality to it, right? Like we did one yeah. where there was like we rolled dice to get different traits that we have to incorporate, yes. right? That's great. Yeah, and I was just kind of verbally throwing lines down, trying to think like, well, uh, like what could be, in, you know, in, inspired by role playing games and stuff. But yeah, or it could be the um, like the bibliomancy technique where you just flip open a book, nonfiction, and write about whatever that is. Like even if you don't know what it is, you just use that word as like or phrase as a jumping off point. Now see that I love. I love that. That's, That's like taking the random awesome. shape and turning it into a thing, kind of kind mm-hmm. of exercise. All right. So bibliomancy. That's cool. Don't think <laughs> stolen that, from but... Jason Lutz, I feel like I should say, at right. the Center for Cartoon Studies. <laughs> nice. Okay. We... Sources are fantastic. So um so bibliomancy mixed with uh four panels two minutes at a time. Oh, whoa. Okay. Or, I don't know. Yeah. I was just saying oh. writing too. This is on you all what you want. Like. Well, and, and that that's, the, this is designed to be something where it's like you hack the game your way, right? Like mm-hmm. take what you want mm-hmm. from this, but like, okay. So what okay. I'll commit to is I will uh, attempt a four panel comic thumbnail. I'm not going to promise final art, but based on <laughs> bibliomancy where I'm going to start something and the word is going to be a prompt and I got to incorporate it in some way. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Thumbnail. That's uh, So it. this is sort of a, um, piece together these elements kind of mm-hmm. two-minute practice. You got bibliomancy to kick things off and where do you take it from there? So yep, and I'm going to use multiple sources. I'm going to use cookbooks, dictionaries, you know, nice. space history, etc. So, well, So here's a question. Do you, are you going to share it with each other online or on the show next week? We, we do it, we do it in the Lena Tart Discord. Um, oh, the Discord. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Sometimes we, we will post something to Instagram yeah. or whatnot, depends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, All right, well, I will a... put a note in by Wednesday that I need to have these four pants. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and as we explore the top of this one, too, it's like I showed up and said, I did one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, I, I saw it, and then I saw your face, and Rob said he did four, so I was like, nice, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the subtle shifting of the face no. and another like uh rule not rule is is that you know it's like you don't have to share it at all if you don't feel like it so it's just it's a it's, a, it's just a prompt to get people to practice to, to like right. you know let, let's stop listening and start doing so absolutely all right uh i think we did it so thanks rob thanks jen yeah thank you both thank you i'm, I'm feeling inspired <laughs> okay so um Gosh, I I am I cannot express my gratitude to both of you for this one. This was this is exactly what I needed right now to puzzle out some some projects for the future and to think more you know uh, deeply and and holistically about creating virtual events this this summer and probably for the next year. So um, we'll see. But uh, I appreciate all of the, the the careful thinking that you both did today. Um, so everybody go check out the, uh, the Very Very Shopping Network tomorrow, linked in the show notes. We'll post on it on our social media as well. And uh, Oh, and Jen, good luck on the move. Uh, I hope Hemlock handles it okay. I know cats aren't always like super excited about moving things. He's, he's got a patio where we're going, so I think he's going to be just fine once he gets there. So. Oh, good. 
Good. Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we stream the show live Thursdays at noon Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Central. We uh, stream it on twitch.tv slash lean into art and then collect it as a podcast at patreon.com slash lean into art and lean into art.com. Until next time, I have been Jersey Drozd of lean into art.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger, also of lean into art.com. And I'm Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Jen? And I've been Jen Vaughn. <laughs> Your guests. Uh, you can find me at the Genya online, uh, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, Leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.